All right. Well, uh, first I'd like to welcome everybody that's watching this video. Um, you know, during these difficult times that's being brought about by the coronavirus, uh, we're seeing some fast changes to our industry. Uh, every auction company is being affected uh, by this, some worse than others. Uh, and what we, what we wanted to do was we wanted to put together just a little information video uh, to help those that have not done online auctions in the past or they are relatively new to online auctions. Uh, we wanted to give you an introduction and give you some things to think about. So hopefully at the end of this video, uh, when you walk away, you're gonna have, you're gonna know what position you're in, which would tell you what type of platforms you need to reach out to. Uh, I wanna introduce our panel today. First of all, I'm Mike Fisher from Alabama. And I'm going to let T. Kyle and David introduce themselves. I'm T. Kyle Swicegood from Moxville, North Carolina, Central North Carolina. And hi, I'm David Whitley uh, from Fort Collins, Colorado. Then uh, we do business in Colorado and Wyoming. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's let's start out by uh, um, all three of us on this panel have had some extensive knowledge uh, in, in online auctions, simulcast, uh, hybrid auctions. Uh, myself personally, uh, I use Martinet now. I've used uh, Highbid. I've probably done several hundred auctions on Highbid. I've used Proxybid, uh, Invaluable, uh, BidSpotter, uh, Maxinet back in the day. So I, I've used a lot of different platforms. What about you, T. Kyle? Well, we started out as live auctioneers and very quickly we moved into the uh, internet only side of the business. Around 2010, 2011, we started with Maxinet and uh, about four years into that, we switched over to Bid Wrangler. And I guess that's throwing the ball to me, Mr. Uh, Fisher. <laughs> so uh, we started out as live auctioneers, still do some live auctions. Not as many as I would like, uh, but uh, we, we've gone, uh, we originally started out doing simulcast uh, using proxy bid. So we have experience with proxy bid and then we shifted to uh, using auction flex and high bid, which is what we currently use to, and I'd say that 95% of our auctions are internet only. We just got done doing a 3,500 lot internet only auction and a 2,500 lot internet only auction two weeks prior to that. So fair amount of experience doing that. Okay. Well, now let's, let's, let's get down to business. So uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to find out from everybody that's watching this is where you are currently at in online auctions. So, and we're going to ask some questions of the panel that, uh, that are important things for you to understand uh, as you're getting in, because there's a lot of different opportunities. There's a lot of different platforms. Each has its strong points. Uh, but, we want to start out with the basics, and that is where you are at today in online auctions. Um, so these, these are some of the things to consider. Number one, have you ever conducted an online auction before? If not, that's fine. And, and number two is, have you ever used clerking software in your business? Uh, because that can give you a little bit of a head start into uh, the actual cataloging process itself. Um, David, how important is how important is having a website for simplistic sake? How important is having a website if you're going to do online auctions? Well, uh, <clears throat> personally, I would say you need to have a website if you're going to do online only auctions. But there are service providers uh, that are what I would call a portal where people come to find stuff that probably in 24 hours, you could be set up as a company on their portal and, and they will absolutely bring you some bidders um, from their portal. The, 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 we have in our business decided that we'd like to be a, a regional marketplace. And so we have had a website for a significant amount of time and have built up an email database with a significant amount of bidders. But, the thing I tell people is if, if you don't have an email list, I, I, there was a point in time when I didn't have an email list and we started with one. You, you always start with one. And, and that was probably me. I was probably the first person that signed up for my own email list. But the, the if you don't have a website right now and you're 
scared of starving to death, um, that there are portals where you can go place your stuff. One of, one of the other big opportunities is the ability to, uh, it, to not, if you're not accustomed to advertising with Facebook, um, Facebook allows you to, to target a market and get the word out immediately at what I consider to be a very reasonable cost. I mentioned in my intro that we just did about 6,000 lots. It was in a town uh, at about five hours away from where we live, and we did nothing but signage and Facebook marketing. In the first auction, we had a thousand registered bidders. Now we had product that people wanted to buy, but we were able to go into an area where I have zero following and, and build a market using basically nothing but Facebook. So for people that think I can't do it, you can, and it may involve the use of vendors, whether it be a platform uh, that helps bring you bidders or going out to an outside vendor that, that advertises on Facebook for you. Yeah. And uh, T. Kyle, I'm going to piggyback on what David said. He said that, you know, we went into a totally new market uh, to do this auction, which is, you know, it's sort of like people that are watching this video now. I mean, you're going into something brand new, but even if he's, he's, he's gone into a new market and he said he used Facebook advertising to, to, to capture that market. Uh, I know this is something you use too, but is it something you have to do in house or are there people out there that can help you with your Facebook marketing? Yeah. Great question. There's our friend, Robert Mayo. Well, Mayo has joined the room. Hey, uh, glad, glad you're here. So uh, to answer your question, you can do it in house uh, or you can sub that out to digital marketing specialists. Uh, and, and there are some in our industry and there are some that are not in our industry that can still help you effectuate the, the advertising needed to make for a successful auction. And Mike, Mike, if I could add, I think there's, I think there's going to be people watching this video that are accustomed to having uh, five, seventy, five hundred, ten thousand dollar auctions, twelve, five, fifteen thousand, and and they're saying, I, I, I can't do this. Uh, I can tell you that, that we were forced because of an issue with a provider. I was forced to go from doing simulcast auctions to doing internet only. And, and I thought it was going to kill our business. Uh, we had a, an idea at the time that we were going to spend about 90 days doing internet only till we had another simulcast solution that came out and we've never gone back because the internet only works so good. So some of you listening to this video right now, and, and trying to figure out what to do because this may be the push that it takes you to go to a different model. When we were doing simulcast, the average small estate that we handled had gotten down to about $3,000 worth of value. Since we've gone to internet only, the average small estate that we handle now does about $20,000. And, and, and I can look at it and look at it and look at it again and wish that I had the opportunity to call bids. But something that I didn't wanna have happen about 10 years ago now forced me to follow this model and it's changed our business for the better forever. So that's just an added comment, but you, there may be a bright lining in this. Right. Yeah. And I think there's going to, there, this is definitely going to change the way we do business and the buying public does business. Now I'm not saying it's going to make a 180 degree change, but the, the effects of these changes, we're going to see in our industry and they're going to, they're just going to multiply and they're going to, they're going to grow as, as we move forward. Uh, welcome to the discussion, Robert. Uh, if you don't mind, introduce yourself uh, and tell us what type of platforms you've used in the past. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to join you. Sorry I couldn't be on when you started the call, but um, Robert Mayo, I'm in Belton, Missouri, which is a suburb of, of Kansas City. And uh, the platforms we used in the past, we started out using portal platforms uh, like ProxyBid, for example. And, uh, and then we went to, uh, uh, I would call it more of an integrated solution, which was uh, JBS Maxa. And we went from that to uh, the MarkNet platform that we use today. So that's kind of our progression of, of different platforms. I've been involved in auctions on other platforms with other companies, uh, different portals like BidSpotter, Live Auctioneer and those, but our company, that's kind of our path that we took. Okay. Well, um, so what we had discussed before you got here was basically what, what we're trying to do is, is let everybody walk away from this video with knowing more about themselves and where they're at and what's going to be important for them 
when choosing a, an online platform. Um, so, you know, we have, we have discussed, David had discussed having, do you have an email list? Do you have a list of buyers? So if you're doing live only auctions um, and you've been using some type of clerking software, uh, are you capturing uh, email addresses when people register to bid? You know, I, I personally met with an auctioneer just three days ago that he does live only auctions. He's had over 10,000 bidders come through his auction house and he's never collected an email address. So he's just starting, he's gonna start over, you know? Um, so uh, if you've, if you've uh, used, uh, there's a, there are clerking or let me say this, there are cataloging softwares out there. Uh, most all of the platforms have some type of back end that you can catalog through the back end. Some of them are better than others. Uh, I, 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 use, uh, I use a clerking software to catalog with, um, and then I upload it to our MarkNet platform. Uh, but I, I, I actually use AuctionFlex to build my catalog because I'm just used to it. I've been using it for eight or nine years and it's easy for me. But uh, what, what do you guys, uh, what are you using for cataloging and uh, how, hard of a, how hard of a learning curve is it for the product you're using? to get somebody up to speed? For us, Mike, uh, it's an integral part of our business, how we catalog. We use WaveBid and uh, it's, it's our number one tool in our briefcase because it connects to multiple platforms. And if you're not used to online auctions, what that means is, is you catalog, uh, photograph, describe all of the items that you're selling once you have that, then you tell it to export to the bidding platform that the customers are able to look at and, and place their bids on. So we personally use Wade Bid. David? Uh, well, so I, 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 I don't want to be the guy telling the war stories, but um, the, 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 the 6,000 lots we recently sold were offsite. We are an auction flex customer. Um, we will sometimes catalog an auction flex. I, I am a person who who is always pushing for speed, speed and accuracy. And one of the earliest ways that people used to catalog was you've got this coffee cup, Dave and Buster's, put a tag on it, says lot number one, take a picture of it, and type a description into Excel. Um, I didn't know how to use Excel when we started in this business, but, and I, I'm one of these guys that didn't even adopt a fax machine early. Um, but a lot tag, a lot tag, uh, a photo and a description typed into Excel and you are in business in the online auction business. And if you don't know how to use Excel, it's, you don't need to learn how to make pivot tables and graphs and charts. You just need to learn how to type in a description, a lot number, and, and get it in there and you can get it into just about all the softwares. And the investment for that is basically zero because if you don't have Microsoft Excel, you can use Google Sheets um, and that's free. And pretty much everybody has one of these, which is a smartphone that has a camera on it. So it, it's, it's that simple, that, that's the barrier to entry to starting to do this and at least build a catalog. And I'll throw it to Robert. I think he's a way well, better. Well, and I'd take it even a step back, David. I mean, if I was, if I was not, if my business wasn't it, what it is today with the processes that we have set up and I wanted to get an online auction up so I could put food on my table tomorrow, um, it'd be a chief pad and my phone camera. Yep. Um, big yellow chief pad and I'd write down what the lot is in the description and I'd take the pictures and bring it back. In fact, I cataloged a, a, a 15 lot vehicle and trailer auction three weeks ago, that exact way. I didn't bring any software out. I just wrote it out on a chief pad, took the pictures, brought back, and then we pushed it into the system. So um, I'm a big believer in keeping it simple. With that said, we do use software for cataloging and um, we've also, we also use spreadsheets uh, for, for that. For some of our catalogs, it's more convenient for us to catalog into the spreadsheet. So whatever you gotta do to get going, um, yeah. And, you know, you can have somebody else type it in, you know, just make sure your handwriting is good. Yeah, we, did, we just did the same thing last week. We had 10 classic cars. Uh, Justin, my son, he went out. He did 1,200 photographs of the 10 classic cars. 
and he had a legal pad that he wrote down the description and took notes, came back and the catalog was up in 45 minutes. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't take, um, you know, the, the more, the more lots and stuff you're doing, uh, you know, you, it's pretty hard to do those on a, uh, on a legal pad. Uh, but, uh, but Excel spreadsheets and those kind of things, very easy to, uh, to get started. Um, so I guess the, uh, the next question would be is, um, uh, if you are, if you have not cataloged before and you don't, do you have staff to do that? Is it something you're doing yourself or is it something that you've got staff or a person, uh, that can help you do that? because that's gonna be important as well when you start getting into this business. Can, or is this something you can rely on? Do you have somebody you can rely on or is it something you're doing yourself? And I think that all of us here actually have lauded ourselves mm -hmm. and we probably have some staff now that help us do that. Is that correct? What about you, T. Kyle? So I, I was just thinking about <clears throat> how I could compare it to when you build a house, you have a framer, you have a plumber, you have an electrician, you have a roofer, you have a sheetrock person. Uh, in our organization, uh, we have office folks uh, that work on the catalog and we have site people that work lot tag and photo. The photos and the descriptions go to the cloud. Uh, our system actually gives you the ability to speak the description into the system. It's not 100%, I'm sure. Uh, if any of you have used that, you've seen uh, the English language butchered. But nevertheless, it goes to the cloud, comes back to the office, and then that's where we uh, uh, whittle the descriptions down to what they need to be, proper English, et cetera. And um, so, yeah, we have multiple people. Uh, and, and I'm sitting here thinking, if I had never done an online auction, how would I be taking uh, the information that we are all providing? Because it sounds daunting. And the first thing I want people that are listening to this to realize is uh, other than Robert, uh, smile Robert, uh, I don't know about you guys, but the geek factor, uh, and hey. I, 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 I can say that because you picked on me one time in AMM. Uh, the, I, I don't have the geek factor. I really don't. I mean, I, I started in real estate in 1991, shifted to auctions in 2009, and I had to learn this stuff. And uh, so the first thing I will tell the person that's listening is all of these systems. Uh, number one, YouTube uh, is a wonderful way to learn how to use Excel. Uh, tech support is a wonderful way to, uh, to learn uh, a cataloging program like WaveBid. And whatever uh, bidding platform that you use, they've got tech support. Uh, but, but back to your question, uh, I think to plan an online auction company out, uh, you can't do it all. I think you have to have different layers of operation. What do you think there, Whitley? Well, I, I, so I'm going to take the other side of the coin because for those of you who know me know that sometimes I'm willing to bite off more than I can chew. And, uh, and sometimes my staff, which is mainly family, will push back. Uh, as an example, we took an auction last fall that I had four days to complete. It was a warehouse that had office furniture and pallet racking and some stuff like that. And it, and I, it, after talking to the boss, they said I was informed that nobody was gonna help me because we had two other auctions scheduled that weekend. And if I wanted to do it, I was on my own. Um, we ended up with about a 500 lot auction that I did with myself and about three people I hired off Craigslist. I did all the cataloging myself with the smartphone and Excel on my laptop. Um, and, and it was a very successful auction that we did in four days from the day we booked it till the building was empty. Um, so the, 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 the benefit that I had is I've got a built in crowd of buyers. So that's one thing that you may not have, but to go back to this example, if, if you've been a live only auctioneer and, and you, let's say you've got a small auction house or you're doing a state side of the house, you've been doing most of what we need you to do to have an internet only auction. You have just been doing it in a little different order because you actually, if you clerk on the fly, when you're doing your live auction, you have been creating a catalog as you clerk on the fly. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. you've already been writing descriptions. They may not be wonderful. And, and Robert and I both go through this. We talk a lot. Um, I'm a big believer in less is more. Um, if I can speed people up by writing a smaller description, that's what I want them to do. So you don't have to write an eight paragraph description for the Dave and Buster's coffee cup. Um, it, it's a Dave and Buster's coffee cup. Lot number one, two pictures, boom, you're done. On to the next item. And, and it's that simple. If, if, you're, if you're in a lockdown where you can't have a crowd, it, you've been setting your auctions up to where they're pretty. You want your auctions to look good. You've been creating a catalog when you clerk it. Uh, the only thing you may not have been doing is taking individual pictures. So it, it is not as daunting of a task as, as you may think. And yeah. to, to yeah. Robert, I guess. Yeah, Robert. Uh, so we have a combination of full-time and part-time employees that, that do most of the cataloging. Um, in our auction center, we have two people that catalog uh, full-time uh, that do our firearm auctions and consignment auctions. Uh, and then on our on-site auctions for estates and business liquidations, we have a, a full-time person that manages our part-time pool of people that we use. Um, and uh, the biggest challenge there with using part-time people or, or full-time people for that matter is just the training curve, the learning curve, right? Not everybody can look at a group of assets or property and line it out how it needs to be lined out to sell successfully. That takes transactional experience, right? And if you're the auctioneer, who has that transactional experience, you're gonna to need to be involved in that until you get somebody trained up to that. And you may be the person um, in the cataloging process that's directing what the lot description is and what pertinent information needs to be in the description so that you're giving buyers what they need to be able to bid with confidence and not have to call you and ask additional questions and whatnot. But if you do get, have employees and you get them trained to a point where they have that transactional experience, uh, then you don't, you don't necessarily need to be involved in that uh, as much, unless you're like David, who's addicted to it. And I could call him at two in the morning and he's cataloging an auction. So, and that's okay. That's a lifestyle choice, right? So, um, you know, it, it's just a matter of getting that transactional experience. And so you may have to be more heavily involved in the beginning, regardless if you have employees or not. Yeah. You know, and we, we found uh, probably six or seven years ago when we first started doing online only auctions or simulcast auctions, uh, we, we, did a, we did a firearms auction. And this was two weeks after the Sandy Hook school shooting. It was, we just got our uh, FFL in. And we did, we had 350, 400 guns, and we probably did 10 pictures of each gun. And once that catalog went live, and we did it on a third-party platform uh, because we needed some gun buyers so that we could buy some marketing through that third party. Um, as soon as the catalog went live, the telephones at our office started blowing up and it was 50 to 60 calls a day asking, you know, what does the stock look like on this side of lot number so-and-so? And we learned real quick that 10 pictures of those items was not adequate. So the next auction we did with 350 guns, we probably did 20 to 25 photographs of every single gun up close, down the barrel, the receiver, the you know the the trigger guard, the stock, all, and guess what? We eliminated 95% of the phone calls. So we, you know in cataloging, that's something that that you learn is that there is a balance between the Dave and Buster's coffee mug and a $1,000 gun, and that balance is uh, it's a balance of time when cataloging, and it's also a balance to the to bidders when they're uh, when they're going through a catalog. Um, one other thing, uh, everybody here, because we're working on different platforms, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that people need to take a look at when they're looking at online auctions is, is how you're going to receive payment. So, we personally do not take payment on site. So, if we're doing an estate auction, we don't do payment on site. We're set up with a credit card processor through our platform, and we bill the credit cards as soon as the auction is over, uh, and then everybody uh, comes for loadout. But how, how do you guys do it? Do you take payment on site? Do you take payment in your auction house? Do you bill everything on credit card? How do you guys do it? We have in our terms and conditions, anything under $2,000 is going to be uh, with a credit card. And if it's over that, it will be picked up uh, with a certified check uh, or wire. 
Uh, I'm getting to where I, I like wire less uh, because of all the wire fraud. Uh, we use a company called Authorize.net and uh, SignaPay, which is uh, basically that's our processor. And uh, I know the NAA has preferred vendors that show up each year at our CNS. Uh, they'll line up to, to work with you. David? So, uh, the, one, the one thing that I'm hoping to help people with out of this is you feel like you've been put out of business by the virus. And, and, and you haven't been put out of business by the virus. Uh, the, the, you got lots of options. So we do currently offer on-site payment. Um, we offer a discount for that for people who pay with cash or certified funds. Um, the vast majority of people who buy from us pay on-site. Uh, I like doing that because it gives me an opportunity to, to touch and feel the person another time. In the times of the coronavirus, that may not be <laughs> what we want to do. We may be wearing a mask. But uh, it, it, for somebody who has never done this before, doesn't accept credit cards, isn't with a bidding platform, you, you can be set up overnight to conduct an auction and accept cash payments. It may take you a little longer to, to figure out how to get a credit card account set up and how to get that activated with, right. your, with your provider. But it, it, it is completely possible to take cash payments uh, right on site. It, it, I, I like to tell people that for those of you who had an auction scheduled on Saturday that you were going to drag out in the front yard and sell it, um, it may take a little more work beforehand, but you can basically conduct it the same way. When we went from a live model to an internet only model, we kept the same people employed for a long time. And instead of our live auction crew working at a live auction, they worked at the preview and the loadout. And we help people load, we collect their money, same thing. So. It, it's not this big dawning thing, and, and it, it, if you feel like you've been put out of business by this, we're trying to give you some options to where you can stay in business and have a new tool. Yeah. Robert? I'm not sure I can add anything else to that. I mean, if you're a live auction company, you're already taking credit cards, probably, and if you're not, um, that was just a business choice, I guess, and you could still make people pay the way you make them pay now mm -hmm. if you want to, it's just a business decision. Mm -hmm. So um, the integration of software and being able to do things in bulk, take a little bit of a learning curve, but Kyle mentioned something earlier, you know, that's where you call your vendor and use their tech support and learn that process mm -hmm. and you'll be fine after you do it once or twice. Yeah. And, and uh, in, in closing, uh, I also wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask each one of you, have you ever partnered with somebody? Uh, I know for me personally, um, I have I've, I have friends in the business that were live only in Missouri. I have gone out and cataloged for them uh, 10,000 a sporting goods store with four different auctions and 10,000 lots and, and partnered with them on it. And uh, um, so, so even, even though for people that this is totally Greek to them, you're still not left out. If, if, you, if you've got assets, you have got potential sellers. There's people all around you, your state associations, national associations, uh, close by, far away. There's people that you can call on that would partner with you and, and assist you while you're learning this process. Uh, it, it, has either one of you, have any of you three, have you partnered with people before uh, doing live auctions that they've never done them before? Or did you partner with somebody when you first got started and you had never done live auctions, either or. Yeah, I, I partnered uh, out of the gate uh, with some friends. Uh, they're, they're friendly competitors. Uh, always be careful who you uh, friendly compete with. Uh, that would be my first uh, words of advice. But uh, uh, when I was first in the business, uh, I took on a large tract of land. I was brand new in the business. I had sold conventionally for years. I was comfortable in doing that but I wanted this to be a success. So I joint ventured uh, with a, a gentleman and his company in uh, the central Eastern part of North Carolina. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. <clears throat> we have complimented uh, each other's business uh, ever since. David? Well, so, and I'll take, uh, we have uh, done partnerships, referrals with lots of people. 
Um, the, the, I have done several auctions where people got an estate or a business liquidation that was well suited to internet only auction and they were not set up to do it. And we worked some kind of deal where they cataloged it um, and sent it to me and we ran it on our platform because once again, I said, we're trying to build a regional marketplace here. And, and we do have a lot of eyeballs in our region, which is what I think a lot of people forget about sometimes. They think they put it on the internet, they're gonna be shipping stuff all over the world. You can in some ways limit that to how you promote the auction. And we try to promote the auction in our local area where I live. There's enough people to buy most of the firearms and coins and furniture and Dave and Buster's cups that we have to sell. And it still does well. So we, we don't try to promote it out to the world a lot of times. Um, we do get buyers from all over the world, but we find that things that are, that would typically, somebody who buys a dresser that's an average dresser that's worth 150 bucks, I don't want somebody in Florida to buy that because then I got to worry about how to ship it to this person in Florida. I want somebody that's going to show up with their, usually it's going to be their Toyota Prius and they're going to ask me to tie it on their roof, um, <laughs> but at least they're local. So th th that's what we try to do. Um, the, 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 so there are auctioneers out there that will work with you. Expect to pay that auctioneer something to do that because they're bringing value to the table. On the other hand, um, auctioneers that want to work with somebody that's local, maybe you've been approached by somebody that says, hey, I've never done online only auction. We're starving to death. What can you do to help me? Um, make certain that when you make that deal with them, if you say, okay, you're going to catalog it. All I'm going to do is put it on my platform and manage it. Make certain with them that you have an agreement that their catalog is going to meet your quality standards because you may make a deal where you say, hey, I'll do it for 5% or I'll do it for 10%. You find yourself re redoing their entire catalog. So it's a, it's a process. It's a trade-off. But the, the thing I want people to know is that if, if you feel like you've been put out of business by this through vendors and partnering with other auctioneers, you can be back in business basically overnight. Um, Robert can probably add in something because he's in a pretty severe lockdown. But the thing I know is Amazon, Amazon is still shipping packages every day. Um, we're going to go to a model where we're going to ship packages every day. We're staying in business through this and, and that's going to work for us. So Robert, you want to add? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a whole new world. That's for sure. But that's another, the whole nother subject um, in regards to the partnering and working together or referral. We, we do it a lot and um, it's fantastic. I mean, we have auctioneers who refer business to us we have auctioneers that we've worked together on where we've promoted those auctions on, on their site and our site. Um, and uh, I mean, it's just a great way to work. So um, I wouldn't be afraid of it. Um, I would make sure that you have a, a good understanding of who's going to do what clearly who does what in each part of the process so that you just don't have any misunderstandings. Um, but I would say that um, if you're going to venture into this, it's probably a good way to start. Find somebody you trust who will come and help you and um, help you uh, get one under your belt. And maybe you can leverage their marketplace a little bit uh, in the meantime. And um, that's one of the great things about this industry is just the sheer number of people who really want to help each other succeed. Um, yeah. It's unbelievable. So. You know, and, and I'll tell you, uh, just, just the four of us, you know, the four of us have never spoke about partnering and have you done this before and you, you know, but all four of us on some level have partnered with other auctioneers, either, you know, I've either we helped them catalog or we promoted or we worked sales and things like that. Uh, for, for the average person in, in, in the uh, NAA, most people don't realize how much partnering is actually going on behind the scenes. And there, there is a, a ton of it because most of the, I know I partner on probably close to 50% of the deals that I do. They're either referrals. Uh, I'm partnering with a, an auctioneer or real estate agent that's brought a deal, uh, or I'm working with an auctioneer that has never done an online auction and they want me to catalog it. They want me to launch it. They just have the deal, you know? So, uh, so all uh, partnering is probably the best way to get started if you have nothing, if you have not been using clerking software and you, uh, you don't have a website and you've been doing live only and you're just doing contract, uh, contract bid calling, or you've been doing nothing but live only, 
benefit auctions. You know, th those auctioneers are hurting as well. This is a great way to partner, bring somebody in and have somebody that is experienced in whatever platform you're going to use, somebody that's experienced there mm -hmm. because they can teach you a lot during this partnering phase. So it's a um, gr great way to get started in this business. I want to, I want to make one comment about what David said, and it probably doesn't need to be part of this discussion, but I think a subsequent uh, conference call that would be really cool would be the, the shipping conversation because most live auctioneers are not used to even talking about anything being shipped. So that, that could be a future discussion. Well, and, and if I could add to that, Mike, uh, and, and they can choose to cut this out or not. We're recording it. Um, I know Robert has used a sign-up solution. Um, we've offline before we started recording, we talked about sign-up genius. Um, that's the one place I have not investigated hard yet because in, in Colorado, the way it is, we're just not supposed to have groups of people together right now. And so we can limit how many people we let in the door. Um, but in trying to be in business and manage a preview or a loadout, maybe I could throw it to Robert and the rest of you. What are thoughts on how to, how to manage that given the current environment? Because I assume we're going live with this very soon. Yes. This, yes. Robert, what, what, what's your idea on that? Well, um, scheduling, I mean, we did not schedule before, um, I mean, a week and a half ago. We did what most online auction companies or, or, or yeah, internet only auction companies do. And that's, we, we had a defined window of time. You could come pick up your stuff and we dealt with crowds. Um, but before we're in a, we're in a 30 day uh, stay at home order right now that um, started yesterday. And um, we are, we are allowed to be in our business to do certain things as a result of that order. But uh Outside of that, we were in an environment similar to David's, which was that we were, were encouraged to not have more than 10 people at a time gathered. Um, I think officially it was the state order was 50, but they were, you know, trying to get everybody to go to 10, which we, you know, we wanted to be part of a solution. So we, we started using uh, a scheduling uh, program to do that. And that, uh, was a little bit of a challenge. The first one we were very successful with and, and how we set it up was we anticipated the, num winning, the number of winning bidders and um, and then of course, con of course confirmed that. So we had a hundred and I think it was 120 something winning bidders and we set it up in 15 minute windows. So it was four people every 15 minutes um, over two half day periods. Uh, and it worked fantastic. We never had more than three or four people in the building or in our environment, but we were in a controlled auction center environment. So fast forward to the next auction that closed, which was a business liquidation that was spread out over uh, uh, a little more hair on it, a little more logistically challenging items that need to be broke down. Uh, and we used the same model, but we opened more slots. We had 168 winning bidders, right? So we had to do five people per 15 minute block. And we added a couple hours to what our normal loadout time would have been. And it just didn't work as well. We had people waiting still. Um, we'd tell them to go sit in their car and we'd text them when they could come back. And I mean, we're learning as we go, right? But what we learned is it, it's probably better. You, can, you, you have to do one, one or multiple of three things. You either have to add more people to the loadout, uh, more or more time or give them more time, right? Yeah. So it's some combination of that. What's the best way to, to do that? And you really have to determine how many lots you have uh, and how long the average person is going to take based on disassembly and whatnot, which, you know, if you're just getting going in this, it's gonna be a little challenge to figure that out, but you can sit down and kind of figure it out. And, and that'll tell you really how many slots you need to have and how many people you need to have there to facilitate the loadout in addition to how many people you can handle per increment of time. And maybe it's instead of 15 minutes, it's 25 minutes or 30 minutes or, or whatnot. 
So um, we like it. We're going to move forward with it even after this is over. God willing, this is over soon. Hopefully yeah. soon. This is horrible for everybody. And, um, but we're going to move forward with scheduling regardless. We're not going back to the, the, the other model. Um, the, the feedback that we've received has been overwhelmingly positive. We still had a few people who were upset that they had to wait 30 minutes to 45 minutes to get even in, even when they had an appointment. Um, and that's unfortunate. Those people are probably would be upset regardless of how you did it. Um, but you know, we're all just trying to do the best we can under the circumstances in dealing with, with these new guidelines, whatever you want to call them. Um, I have a few choice words of what I call them, but probably ought to edit that out. Um, yeah. So, well, and we, if we, we, uh, we started this weekend, we've never used the scheduling software and we started, uh, actually today we have, we have a, an estate closing tomorrow night and we actually use the scheduling software today to schedule previews doing the same exact thing. That's uh, our next step. Yeah. So we did previews today, scheduling it. And then, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night, when, uh, when the invoices are done, when you get your paid invoice, you're going to get a link to the sign up deal, same thing. And we're going to be using that. We're going to be using this for, um, real estate auction previews. Uh, we're going to do it for personal property auction previews and we're going to be using it for loadout on personal property. So, uh, you know, you know, what's great about using that for a real estate auction preview is you don't have to be there any longer than you need to be. If you do this, that's exactly right. Right. Now you may build in a little cushion for people who show up when you have the signs up or whatnot. But if you know, 17 people are coming at this window of time, then, um, yeah. You can go home when you're done. It's real. I mean, David said it earlier. Um, or I, actually, I don't remember if David said it or you said it, Mike, but there are probably some blessings that are going to come out of this. Absolutely. Good things that are come out of this. And this is one of them. Yeah. Is we're going to get better at handling crowds. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, whether you're doing it live or online, um, I tell people all the time that, you know, just because it's online doesn't mean you lose excitement or you, or you, you can't lose sight of the things that you were doing at a live auction, like working, working a bidder prior to the auction, working a bidder prior to coming to the preview of the <clears throat> piece of real estate, you know, just knowing who they are. Well, this scheduling software also lets you do that. So now you get to see if it's a piece of real estate and it's somebody that's downloaded an auction information package and now their name pops up and they've scheduled a preview time. So now you get, you know, now you get to start mentally putting together who your best players are before you ever walk out to the preview. You know, it, it gives you, there's a lot of tools on the online thing that really flow well into, uh, that come from live auctions that flow well into the online thing, giving you insight into bidders and who's serious and who's strong and those type of things. And these, these scheduling software is just one of them. Uh, any anybody have any closing thoughts? T. Kyle, you have any closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I'll just kind of go over five points that I kind of wrote down before we started this conversation, and I think these are the the bullet points that I would recommend the person that's never done a live auction. I'm sorry, an online auction uh, to to jot down, and these are the bullet points that you needed to have. Number one, you got to have a digital phone. Number two, you need a website, preferably a secure website. Uh, spend good money one time. Don't, don't, don't do the cheapest necessarily bidding platform. We've talked about the different platforms that each of us use, uh, get a credit card processor, unless uh, you want to take cash only like David was talking about earlier. Uh, and the one note that I made on social media, you asked, do we hire that out? And I said, yes, uh, this is confusing to some people that are not used to, uh, using social media advertising. Don't rely on your friend list. That's not how you're going to sell assets at an auction. You're, you're going to have to pay uh, for uh, advertising on, on on Facebook and on Google. Uh, so don't don't rely on necessarily your friends list. I want to thank you, Mike, for putting us together. So uh, this has been informing to me, David. 
Well, so I'll, I'll echo that with thanks, Mike, for being the catalyst for doing this. Uh, everybody that's watching the video, I, I want to, uh, as a director of the NAA, I want to remind them that uh, the, the NAA does things for you that you may not be aware of. And, and when things happen, we try to be on the ball and do things. And this is a result of the Education Institute trustees with some leadership from Mike and others saying we need to get things out to members right away. <clears throat> So with that being said, uh, for, for those of you who are, uh, the, the flowers are going to come up this spring. We're, we're going to have spring. Things are going to get better. I, I don't know how long this is going to last. We may be in a new normal for a very long period of time. But uh, today's Wednesday, and our phone has been ringing off the hook today with people who are having estate sale companies cancel on them because of the limitations placed in the Denver metro area. And this, with every problem comes an opportunity. If we as auctioneers can provide solutions to these opportunities, to these problems, uh, we can solidify our position in this market for a long time to come. And so I think some of the things we've discussed here, and I hope that further discussions occur offline, um, I think we've got many solutions that are viable to the current problems, not only in the personal property realm, but also in the real estate realm. So for those of you people who are watching this video, just to see what we have to say, who are already doing this, think about the ability we have, because we know how to put stuff online and do an excellent job representing it. Um, th those of us who have been doing this for some time. If the real estate market in your area, if you're hearing that the realtors are saying, we can't do open houses, we can't do previews, we can't show the house, we can't do this. Um, this may be a huge opportunity for those of us who already know how to market things in a digital world to move forward. So I, I think that numerous opportunities present themselves with, with each problem that pops up. So I would suggest to all of you watching this video, figure out a way to be a problem solver and, and we'll all do well. Robert? Great, great comments. Um, yeah, I would also like to echo, thank you, Mike, for taking the lead on this. Um, I'm hopeful that what comes out of this is um, some hope for those who are seriously affected by what's going on and their, their ability to just to get back on their feet and get their business going and generate some revenue and feed their family. I hope that's what we're, hope we help somebody with that today. Um, I would have one thing to comment on marketing. Um, you know, auctioneers are good marketers, generally speaking, whether you're live or online, generally speaking, that's, I mean, that's what we do as we market. So if you're making that shift from all you've ever done is, is online to live, um, you probably are already doing 90% of what you need to do to market the online auction effectively. The difference is where you drive the user or the bidder and the call to action and what they need to do, right? So instead of getting them to come to your live auction event on a given day at a given time or a preview or whatever it is, you're, what you're doing is getting them to come to the catalog, right? And getting them to bid. And so you're going to need to shift the way you, you, you say things, the terms you use to get them to take the action that you want them to take. And, and really that's all. The rest, you're going to still do the same, probably the same, maybe a little more marketing uh, because you, you want to make sure you get new people that you may not have been reaching otherwise if you're doing this shift. So um, if you need any help with that, uh, there's lots of us out there that are willing to, 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 to help you on a phone call or something like that to just to give you some things to think about so i hope this helps somebody out there i really do i thank you again mike for putting this together and i hope that the, the naa pushes this out to um all auctioneers that's my hope not just NAA members everybody in our industry needs this information right now and um, i hope that they all get it yeah, absolutely and I'm, I'm i'm going to uh i'm just going to close by saying that uh uh, all of us, all four of us, at one point was doing our first online auction. Uh, and there, there are, don't feel like this is overwhelming. And please look at this as an opportunity because there couldn't be a better time for you to get started in the online auction business than, it, than right now. Because if you reach out to other people, that you're, that, uh, other colleagues, uh, state association, NAA members, you reach out to those inside your circle that's doing these, guess what? 
everybody's being affected right now by this virus. Some people are being affected more than others. Some of us are on lockdown, some of us are not. But guess what? There's not a better time to call on your friends in this business for assistance. Uh, and, and because everybody's slow right now. Everybody's, well, I say slow, some people are slower than others, but now is the perfect time for, for you to become acclimated to the, uh, to the online portion of our industry. Uh, again, on behalf of the NAA uh, and the Education Institute trustees, uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, spending the time with us today and sharing some information. And uh, hopefully we can get together again soon and roll out another informational video. Thanks again, guys.